Once Upon a Cow is a story about eliminating excuses and settling for nothing but success. It's a metaphor about getting rid of all of the justifications and pretests and false beliefs and limiting attitudes that keep people bound to a life of mediocrity. Because what I found is that although most of us aspire to greatness, so often we settle for second place. We want to live our lives to the fullest, but we end up just surviving, or at the very least dissatisfied with the lives that we're living. We find a comfort zone and get used to it, and before long, we realize that all of the great things life has to offer have simply passed us by. And one of the reasons is that we have succumbed to an epidemic of excuses and justifications and rationalizations and fears and explanations, or as I call them, cows, that we use to either shift blame, cope with perceived weaknesses, or we use to explain why is it that we're not taking action? Why is it that we're not doing the things that we know we should be doing? But of course, the only thing that all of these excuses really accomplish is that they keep us bound to a life of mediocrity. They prevent us from using our true potential. They are the real enemy of success. And I like to stress this because um, a few years ago, I was doing a seminar in Argentina uh, for some 8,000 people. And I asked the audience at one point to shout the answer to this question. And then I asked, what is the opposite of success? And as you can imagine, 8,000 people shouted failure. And you know, the first thing that came to mind was that maybe not long before that, I probably would have answered the same way. Because we have been conditioned to believe that failure is the enemy, that failure is to be avoided, that nothing good can come out of it. And there are some people that they fear failure like the plague because they had been taught to be afraid of it. But then I examined the lives of entrepreneurs and discoverers and inventors and composers, men and women who have shaped really the, the history of mankind. They had their share of failures. Then I realized that the true enemy of success is not failure as some people think, but mediocrity. That idea that we can just get by. Because there's nothing to be learned from mediocrity. In fact, when we settle for second place, the learning process stops. You see, successful people have at least one thing in common. They don't make up excuses to justify why things are the way they are. They don't complain about the way things should be. They simply accept responsibility for their success and they take action. And if they fail, they get right back in the game. And their success begins with eliminating excuses and banishing mediocrity from their lives at all costs. Or as I say, it begins with killing your cows. You know, sometimes people ask me, why a cow? Well, the cow happens to be the main character of the story. Uh, this is a story of a very, very poor family who lived in this rundown little shack. The structure was at a point of collapse, water leaked through the roof. In other words, a complete state of poverty and destitution. But oddly enough, the people had a most unusual possession considering their circumstances, they own a cow. And the cow gave them two things. First, it gave them the milk, which was the only food with any nutritional value they had. But it gave them something even more important. It gave them the feeling that at least they were not in complete misery. Because after all, they had a cow. You know, they had this attitude of, hey, don't complain. At least you have a cow. You should count your blessings. There are a lot of people in worse situations than you are. One day, the unthinkable happened. 
somebody killed their cow. And the first thing that comes to mind is that if they were poor when they had their cow, imagine what's going to happen now that they've lost it. They'll probably die as well. But you know what I found is that when people find themselves in this kind of predicaments, when they have hit rock bottom, when they're facing this do or die situations, they usually do. They find a way to bounce back. And that is exactly what this family did. They cleared this little patch of dirt behind their house and they planted some seeds so that they could have something to eat. And that is how they survived during those first few months. But after a while, they had enough for them to eat, so they sold the rest to their neighbors. And with that money, they were able to buy more seed. And they, they planted a little bigger patch, and after a while, they had enough for them, for their neighbors, and they were able to sell the rest at, in the town's market. And so, little by little, they were able to improve their living conditions eventually building a better house until they found a way to a successful and fulfilling life. And the question that comes to mind is, would they have achieved all that had they still had their cow? And the answer is probably not. Why? Because they wouldn't have any reason to move out of that comfort zone in which they were. You see, the moral of the story is that the cow that they so cherish as their prized possession was in fact a shackle that had them chained to a life of mediocrity and poverty. And they had to get rid of that cow for them to find their true potential and find their way to the life they truly wanted and deserved. And of course, a bigger lesson is that we all have cows. And our cows, our, our excuses, our justifications, our rationalizations, all of those little lies that we tell ourselves. And just like the cow in the story, we must get rid of them. We must kill our cows if we want to find our true potential and live the life we truly want. Let's take a listen to some of the most common cows I've heard. See if you recognize any of them. I hate my job, but at least I've got one. With the economy and the job market the way it is, I should consider myself lucky. Or, or how about this one? I love to exercise, but I just don't have any time. Besides, there are no gyms close to where I live. And even if there were any gyms, I don't think I could afford a gym membership right now. And even if I could, I am so out of shape that I'd probably be doing more harm than good. Besides, I already get enough exercise at work. <laughs> Do you see that? There are at least five or six cows right there in that little sentence. So, what do we do to get rid of all of our cows? Well. In the last chapter of the book, I share with you a five-step process that will help you do just that. But it, essentially, it all boils down to making a decision to identify what your excuses are and get rid of them. Banish mediocrity from your life. You will find that when you are in a cow-free environment, you'll discover that you have everything that it takes to make your dreams a reality. Have a fantastic journey.